in the past we've used things like responder cast or just the HDMI cord plugged straight into the controller and while both of those do have its advantages um, they have their disadvantages as well uh, for one responder cast costs money uh, as well as any of the other streaming services the HDMI cord is your tethered to the screen you want to display on native in Android is a screencast function and I had to poke around to find it, but I did find it. Uh, one of the reasons that DJI probably did not include it um, up front and advertise it is there is a bit of lag to it. I would not recommend trying to fly using that particular um, transmission to a screen. If you want to fly with a screen, I would totally recommend using an HDMI cord. Um, any of the data streaming services are just going to be way too much lag. So with that, I'm going to use the screen record function and show you how to do this. All right, this is pretty simple. You just want to swipe down to your settings. You have a Bluetooth symbol, the second one in out of your circles underneath the clock. Press and hold that and you're going to see connection preferences. Give that a tap. You're going to see cast with three dots up at the right. Enable wireless display. Now when you back out of here, once you enable it, the screencast icon will always be there even if you uncheck the box beside uh, enable wireless display. So we're going to go ahead and give that a tap. And you can see here I have two um, to pick from. This TV in front of me is the 40 inch JVC Roku TV. This works with Chromecast and Amazon Fire Stick, I believe. I'm pretty sure I've used those before. So you're probably going to need to, the first time you connect to it, you're going to have to allow it with your Roku device. Uh, I think I clicked allow all the time, and there we are. We have the display up on the TV. Um, we got black bars on the side, so obviously my resolution is not exactly the same as the TV. Um, but as you can see, here's a little example of the lag. That was quite a bit. That was probably more than I've ever had. That could be something to do with um, because I'm screen recording right now, I'm not sure uh, both the Roku device and the DJI controller need to be on the same wireless network. They do not, however, need internet. So let's talk about those advantages and disadvantages of something like RespondeCast or the HDMI cord or this new screencast function. Um, I don't, it's not new, it's in every Android device that I've seen over the last few years. You've always been able to um, cast screens to smart TVs and Roku devices on your Android phones or tablets. So I just was kind of shocked that it didn't have the capability here. One of the biggest disadvantages to here is that lag we talked about earlier. Um, I mean, this is probably the worst I've ever seen it when I was messing around with this before. It never was that bad. Uh, RespondeCast has a lag as well, um, but not nearly this bad in my experience. Uh, this probably got a lot to do with your connection, though. It's probably got a lot to do with your Wi-Fi connection or cellular or any data or on both ends. Um, one of the disadvantages of RespondeCast is that you do have to have an internet connection. Uh, you have to have an internet connection. Whoever's watching it has to have an internet connection um, because it does go to their cloud. So if you're in a remote area with no internet, you can still launch a hotspot from, say, your phone, connect your Roku and your uh, controller to the same hotspot and Theoretically, it should work. So I hope this helps out. If you 
have any other comments or better solutions for this, leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Bye.